Hey guys! So this is gonna be a continuation of last week's video where I did a bunch of like repotting and refreshing to this room and I'm realizing now it's not going to be a two-part video it's probably gonna be three to four parts to get this refresh done and I'm actually filming this quite late in the week like it's Friday now this video is going up on Sunday so I only have like part of today, part of tomorrow to edit it. So we're not going to do a ton. We're going to tackle like the mission critical stuff to the room. So we're only gonna tackle the things that needed to be done like yesterday. So on the roster today, we have to chop up some plants. My feelings around it, it's complicated. <laughs> I wanted to grow my plants big. Like that the reason why I haven't been propagating is twofold. One. I have nowhere to put the propagations and two I'm trying to grow them big so like we made a pact as a, our planty friend group to stop chopping our plants so much and just let them mature and the plants are getting mature not all of them but there have been a few that have been getting a little bit too big and um, I'm realizing that they're not I don't enjoy them as much as I did when they were like more medium size and then the other thing is like I need to well if you didn't watch my last week's video I kind of kind of tuck this away at the end <laughs> I'm not unemployed well like unemployed in the traditional sense like I don't have a full-time job so I need to purge some plants like I don't know how long I'm gonna be unemployed for hopefully not for too long but also I'm kind of enjoying it so basically I need to just get make sure that I'm <laughs> bringing in money on a weekly basis so I'm not feeling too um, stressed about it and I can be productive in the ways I want to be productive in this time and I, I'm, I'm feeling like it's a bit of a blessing to have this like very precious time to work on myself so Charmaine Jing and I are planning to do a purge we've been talking about it for a while and um, I think this would be a good opportunity to get together and um, make some money and we're probably gonna do like a just set pickup point on a certain day we all just come together have a picnic or like just chat have food and wait for people to come pick up their plants which I find to be like the least painful way to do purge pickups and the other thing we have to do today is my cart my bar cart where I'm gonna put a lot of plant supplies which is still right now full of a mixture of like plant stuff I don't use and also non plant stuff so we're gonna clear everything out and I'm gonna show you some things that I picked up to fill that cart with so if you have like chores of your own or if you just want to like grab a snack and relax let's just like hang out for a little bit I think I'm gonna start with the chops and then while those plants are callousing we'll work on the bar cart and I might actually repot those plants up off camera because I don't think I have time to <laughs> edit like a two-hour video um, so that's what we're gonna do. I'll show you the plants first and we're gonna get to work and then just let the video flow. Oh and also we're going to maybe like look around the plant room for anything else. I'm just gonna sell it as is without like propagating or cutting. I'm just gonna sell the whole entire plant. So the first plant we're chopping is this guy. He's not super ready to be chopped but also I think he's kind of ready to be chopped. If you watched last week's video um, that was when I built up the moss up to the top here to let it root so it definitely hasn't rooted up here yet but there should be roots like about here to the plant. I talked about my feelings about the Florida Beauty in my Instagram stories like very briefly but essentially my feelings about this plant are starting to be love mixed with a lot of stress and I don't like it. It used to be just pure joy surrounding this plant, but it's it's stressing me out because it's so big and it's not just the leaf size. Like I love the leaf size. I love this mature form of the Florida leaf. Like I think that is like one of the most beautiful things that mother nature has ever created. But the petioles are so freaking long. Like the wingspan on this plant is no joke. And I think back on when the plant was this size and the the internodes were much tighter it was a lot bushier and I was getting like just pure joy from this plant and I kind of want to go back and I want to kind of start over so opportunity to both chop down the plant and make some money um, I'm sure somebody must be looking for a Florida Beauty of this maturity and of this like level of variegation because this 
has been a really good specimen for variegation. This is the newest leaf. It's doing this kind of like half moon kind of thing with a lot of like marble mixed through. This was the leaf below. So these would be the top three leaves. These three here. I think the plan would be to chop it like right here, right about here. So I'm just gonna get like the base of the plant and then we're gonna assess the root system on that top cutting and if it's not a lot then I'll sell the whole thing. If I feel like I could get, a, uh, get away with chopping it a second time, I might. So that's the first one. The second plant we're chopping, I can't believe the day has finally come but I feel like, I feel like I should. We're gonna chop the Dark Phoenix. Now I don't know if I want to sell this in the purge or if I want to wait a little bit and get that auxiliary bud popping before I chop it because I feel like it'll give me more peace of mind selling it that way. At the very least I want to see like active root growth which I think should be pretty quick with this plant. Like it recovers from repotting really quickly. It roots really fast. It's got mm, like a couple of repots um, in the last year and it always fills out the pond because it freaking freaking loves pond and I probably could get away with like keeping these top three leaves and then like these bottom ones I'll see like how many nodes I can get away with chopping but um yeah sad but I think the plant can handle it and I really feel like this plant needs to be in more people's collections I think um there should be a good amount of interest locally for this plant a few months ago I chopped up my gloriosum my my big white veins gloriosum that gets like zebra -y in the summer times in the warmer months so this is the bottom cutting. My main one still lives in my tent. Basically when I chopped it, it activated like six growth points. Three of them, three, yes. Three of them are actively growing into like big plants, big-ish plants. So I'm thinking to like chop those three off and then let the rest of the stem kind of like start growing again. And like this basically like little gloriosum farm. This leaf here, this leaf here is like a, a top growth. This one here has these two leaves right here. And then this one has this leaf here. And also this plant needs a clean because it's quite dusty. So I'm gonna shower it off. Somebody asked when I was like showing all the growth points whether I had notched this plant, which is basically like making a cut not right through the stem, but you're wounding that stem like probably like halfway through. And oftentimes people will stick like a piece of plastic in there to prevent the plant plant from healing back on itself so that stresses the plant to like activate that axillary bud i didn't do that so i just i chopped it at the top moved that top cutting separately and it just activated all the growth points on its own i'm sure it has something to do with hormones but i didn't really like do anything to the plant i didn't add any hormones like some people say that growth hope no rooting hormone can activate growth points I don't know the truth in that. Um, also people use like cakey paste. In my experience, um, cakey paste has been kind of damaging to philodendron growth. So I haven't had um, actually great experience with cakey paste on aeroids. That's not to say that like it doesn't work, but I've kind of stopped using cakey paste. Anyways, so all that to say, I didn't do anything to make it activate all those growth points. I just plopped it back in here and continued on with like my usual regimen of applying great white and then like after a little while fertilizing with every watering. So I think um, those three are the big chops and then we'll figure out any other plants we're gonna sell. I think there will be a few, but they won't be needing chops. So let's get to work on that first. So we're actually gonna have to like do this on the floor because I don't um, really have a, well I do have a table it's over there, but I don't really feel like getting it. So taking a little moment to say goodbye to this plant as it is. Um, I'm very proud of this, by the way. I'm not good with maturing climbing philodendrons, so this was a big victory for me. And I don't mean to sound like ungrateful when I say like, uh, I don't like it, but it is what it is. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this plant very well, but this is basically the beauty of the lazy moss pole. Like making a lazy moss pole for a climber, this is the point where you really get to reap the benefits because you can undo it and um, undo that moss to reveal 
your air layering handiwork really easily. And actually, since I started making Lazy Moss Bowl, I haven't really been propagating, so I haven't reaped the benefits, like the full benefits of the Lazy Pole. And I like how I like, oh, they activated some aerial roots up here actually. I was gonna say that like this was pointless with the moss extension that I did last week. Was it last week? Yeah, but it actually did some good. And then what I actually wanna do, I'm gonna like undo the entire pole because I think I wanna put him on one of the D-shaped like honeycomb clear moss holes that I get from Lauren. It's actually a little sturdier and one of the regrets I had with this pole is that uh, I didn't really expect it to grow so big and get, get so top heavy so it was really hard for the lazy pole to support that that weight at the top. The lazy pole is great for like starting a climber but once they start to get really big it starts to be really hard for the pole to support that weight. I don't know if you can even see what I'm doing. I'm just really taking the straps off right now. Oh my gosh. Okay, all straps are off and then we can kind of see what we're working with in terms of a root system. So we're going to chop him hmm, here. We're gonna chop him right here. So all the way down to this leaf here. Where did I say it was? Here? Here? No, here. Oh, no turning back now. So if I just turn the plant around, you're gonna be able to see that the roots kind of go all the way down. So I have to kind of untangle and figure out this puzzle of where that top cutting ends. There's actually a lot of dead roots in here too. I'm just trying to not break those primary roots. Oh. Actually, that was not so bad. But I definitely got like a good amount of like secondary root breakage. So this is this is what we're working with. Now we're gonna just undo the moss to see what how much we have in terms of roots. But um, in terms of propagating Florida Beauty, I've never propagated it without um, active aerial root growth. And I'm sure anyone who watches Plant YouTube will have like heard this already. But uh, Florida Beauty is known to be quite hard to propagate because um, without an aerial root, they're really hard to root. So every time I've ever propagated it, I've only ever sold bottom cuttings. I'm just pulling off some of these like dried out aerial roots. <sighs> I hate moss, you guys. I wish tree fern fiber was cheaper because I could just get rid of moss entirely, but there's just really no other substrate that you can use in a lazy moss bowl other than moss, which is unfortunate because now, now I have a plant rooted into moss. So anyway, um, like quick little life updates. So if you didn't watch my last week's video, uh, my intro might have been a little bit like, what the heck? <laughs> She's unemployed. Um, yes, I am currently unemployed in the, in the sense that I don't have a full-time job. I quit my job. My last day was a week ago today. So it's been a week of not, oh, it's been a week of unemployment. And when I was kind of like thinking about what life would be like in that first week, I was like, oh, I'm gonna have so much time and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna clean and I'm gonna like do this one online course I've been like meaning to do for a long time. I've already signed up, I just need to start it. I'm gonna just be like applying to jobs left, right and center. But this week has actually been so jam packed busy. Probably because I was just saying yes to everything. I definitely have time for it. Like I'm not working full time. So I'll like, yeah, I'll say yes to this. I'll say yes to this. I'll reply to comments. I'll reply to emails. And like, I, like I'm like i not joking. I haven't had no time, which is why I'm leaving this so late. I wanted to do um, two videos a week for a while, but I think, um, Basically, I'm not gonna be able to do two videos a week right away. I also have to build up some extra videos and just kind of be ahead of schedule for a while because in July, I'm going away for a few weeks. My boyfriend and I are going uh, to the UK because he hasn't been home 
in four years, which is a really long time and he hasn't seen his family for a really long time. So we were spending a few weeks in the UK, kind of like um, starting from London and going down to Wales and then like stopping in between. So in that time, I need to have extra videos in the queue. Basically, a um, little life update is that I didn't address this in my last video, but I did quit my job without another job lined up. I feel a bit high strung lately. I've been doing a good amount of like manic cleaning around the house. I feel a little bit restless, which I'm sure is like to be expected in this time. Like I haven't been without a job and I don't even know how long, but I'm choosing to direct my energy into things that like better my life. So obviously I'm going to do the, the responsible thing of like <laughs> do, doing my courses and like applying for things and interviewing and stuff. Um, but also I'm very heavily invested in refreshing and sprucing up my entire house. I did a little bedroom refresh at the beginning of the week. I just ripped everything out of my closet and threw not throughout, but like I gathered two garbage bags full of clothes for donation. And um, in that process, tidied up a lot of like clutter as well. And then my boyfriend, I feel like he was kind of, he was, he was serious in a way, but like in a extra enthusiastic way was saying like, wow, I'm like so proud to live here. <laughs> It's silly, but I'm chasing that feeling and I'm gonna go through like the entirety of my home and do that to every space. And I really want to feel like I've decorated with intention. I'm kind of like the kind of person, I'm very sentimental about objects. So if something came to me from somebody, then chances of me holding onto it forever <laughs> because I love that person is very high. And the other thing is that like, my eyes adjust to things and I never really stop to like think, does this object or this piece of furniture have a place in this home? Does this, does this make sense? Is it serving a purpose? Is it functional? And is it looking good within the space? It's frustrating for me because like, it gets to a point where I don't love the way a space looks, but I don't even know where to begin. Cause I'm like, I can't get rid of that. This came from this person. Oh, I have so many memories with this thing. And like this came, with me through multiple different moves and like it's I've always had it so like how could I not have it anymore and um the one nice thing about why is there there's like confetti in here I'm pretty sure this must have come from Charmaine now I don't know why I think that there's no reason for me to think that but I feel like it came from Charmaine but yeah the one, one, not the one, one good thing of being friends with Charmaine is that she is so neurotic about her space that she's constantly rethinking it and like she's moving things around all the time. And I know that like, like neuroses can be kind of, kind of a bit of a handicap at times, but also at the same time, I know she gets a lot of joy out of this. I think that um, some, having someone in your life that is always doing this and showing you their handiwork and being like super happy about it has helped me to let go of habits, like mental habits that I need to hold on to everything just because, even though it's not serving a purpose in my life anymore and never will. Do you know what I mean? The problem really is that my boyfriend and I have very different decorating <laughs> opinions. Like something that I want, he might hate. Like not even just be like, uh, I guess so, but like he's actively against it. And the same thing vice versa. Um, like he wants certain things built or added to the home. And I'm like, hell no, absolutely not. Not in a million years. So um, <laughs> we'll definitely have to find a happy medium. So anyways, this is the plant. The root system is like this. It's, I know I feel like I could have hoped for better, but it, it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to, um, basically I'm going to soak this in water for a little while just to get the moss off. And then I'm going to try to dry out that wound as much as possible. The good thing is that that part of the stem was quite small. Like the stem hadn't gotten like as thick as up here. There's actually not 
much surface area to callus. And I purposely left an extra node down here. So this, this is a node for from a leaf that fell off. And then the next leaf up is here. So there's a bit of insurance here for that cutting. But I feel I feel good about this ability. This ability. I feel good about this plant's ability to come back. Now, do we chop it again? I feel like we should. I actually, yes, we are going to chop her again. I could get two three leaf cuttings out of this. So these three leaves here, let me show you. These three, right? And then these three. Oh my gosh, it is so pretty. We're gonna do it and we're gonna cut it right here. This is the auxiliary bud of the top leaf of the bottom cutting. And then we're gonna cut it right right above it and leave this much insurance. <sighs> you know what? Because this is such a beautiful cutting and now the root system is only this big, I might actually pot this up with a pole. It's, it's worth not like a ton of money. It's not worth as much as it used to be, but it's not gonna be worth peanuts either. So I think um, I wanna set this plant up for as much success as possible. So I'm gonna actually get her straight onto a pole. So these two are gonna sit in water so that moss can kind of soften and be easier to remove. So this will also help me to see like what roots are dead, like dried out, crispy, like should be removed before I pot it up. So this one, this chop is done. And I'll deal with this bottom guy off camera. But it's very strange for me to be holding on to the bottom cutting of this plant, but this is what I'm holding on to. I mean, the worst thing that could happen is that it reverts. But I have so many nodes to work with, I don't think that's going to be a huge issue. But if it does, that's just, that was just my fate, I guess. Next up is the one we have not been waiting for. I feel all sorts of sadness no not sadness a little bit of worry that you know i'm gonna mess it up a plant that i love so much so this one i definitely have to get out of here because the roots of the top have gone into the substrate and also when i sell the bottom i don't want to send it with the glass vessel because i really like this glass vessel All right, here we go. I'm actually gonna loosen the roots as much as possible so I can see what I'm working with. What were we talking about before I made that chop? Oh yeah, so yeah. Um, oh no, broke that root. Like I was saying, um, unemployed life has been so far really busy, um, which is good because I need to stay busy and productive, but I wasn't planning on filming this video today. I was going to take a break from the repotting because I mentioned many times before, um, repot videos tend to be the hardest and the most time consuming videos to, to make. I feel anxious um, and I don't think I could sit there and do a quick, easy show and tell video because I just, I have too many thoughts swirling in my head. So I needed something to do with my hands. And the good thing about being unemployed is that you have a lot of mental energy for things. If I need to stay up really late to get this edited and up, then so be it. But yeah, I wasn't expecting life to immediately get super busy and I don't see it getting any less busy in the, the next while, if I'll be honest. But I'm very lucky, like very extremely lucky that I have, where did my shears go? Huh? Hello? What? Oh, here they are. Um, I feel very extremely lucky that I have YouTube. It's not a full-time income amount of money, um, to be clear, but I feel very lucky that I have that at least and I can piece together enough to, to be full time. 
um, income, like or closer closer to full time income. I'm also working a few days a week with Lauren at Nocho Tropicals, so that's part of the reason why I've been busier than expected. I'm very happy with the, what the heck. Oh, all right. So this is I forgot about this. This is it the um, mother stem. And it might, it might have another note on it. So we're gonna chop that first. And we're going to, we're going to hope that it still has enough juice for another growth point, cause that will be really nice. So that's, I guess, unexpected cutting number one. So if you have never propagated an anthurium by cutting before, it can be difficult. Like, I'm not gonna lie, because the nodes are so tightly stacked, that's challenge number one. And the other thing is that, like, the the axillary bud on that node is very hard to see. Sometimes you can get lucky and you see, like, this little kind of protuberance. But even then, it can either be a axillary bud or the start of a root. <laughs> so the, there's still a little bit of guessing to be done, but you, you will still have that axillary bud per node like a philodendron it's just harder to see it so it's harder to um it's kind of hard to know where exactly to cut so you don't cut through that ax axillary bud like i said before i wanted to get these top three leaves oh my sweet baby plant i love you so much if i get those three that means i have only these roots here which is not my favorite prospect in the world. Ugh. Okay, I accidentally broke the bottom leaf. Actually, change of plans. We're going to go for the bottom first because I see more space down here. I'm just trying my best to locate where the axillary bud might be so I don't chop right through it. So I'm kind of just like rubbing away some of these dried up sheets okay cut number one is going to be right here it's going to be just a leafless chunk with a lot a lot of roots fuck my dad's calling me right now hello hi we're here you're here okay i'm filming um okay yeah okay i'll come out Okay, bye. Be right back. So I'm back. That was my dad bringing Huxley back. He's had Huxley for the week. Um, and also, my boyfriend's been away all week for work. So it's been very quiet in this house. So where did I leave off? I was showing you this cutting. And I was trying to find where the axillary bud would be. I didn't find one where I'm like 100% sure that's for sure where the growth point would come out. But there are sometimes like you can see, maybe you can't see, but there's like a bit of a swell here. And um, there are multiple nodes on this cutting. So the chances of it growing another plant are very high. So that one will get potted on its own, plus this. And then we just need to get one more chop out of the top, I think, cause that's quite, let me see. Can you see? That's quite a lot of stem goes from here to here. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do it. Now this one is a little two leafer. Oh, it's so cute. The next leaf down is this one. This was, this one was one of my like very exciting leaves because this is one of the leaves when it was starting to like, wow, that looks like a dark phoenix, you know, like that venation and then the leaf after was so narrow and like, it's kind of on the more bullet side. This one was a very exciting leaf for me as well. So now I have three cuttings and then my main plant. And I actually feel like I might stop here. That's the responsible thing to do and maintain like this root system for the plant. I feel like I could cut more, but it wouldn't be wise. So this is the this is the plant I'm gonna keep now. Um, that's the top three leaves, and then got a bunch of little little guys down here. I was almost contemplating cutting it like here, so you'd get 
this little deformed leaf, but you'd also take away like these really nice juicy roots. So for the sake of this plant and how much I love it, and I don't want it to like basically turn back into like a juvenile baby, like we're gonna, we're gonna stop there. We have these three cuttings, this one, this little leafless one, and this little leafless one. Um, I don't know if this will produce anything. I don't know if like all of the nodes have been spent. It re very well might have been, but we'll, we'll, we'll just see what happens. Like I feel like it, it, there's a chance that this will grow something. And then um, this one should grow something. Almost, I'm almost certain of it. And this one also should grow something. And then the last chop we need to make is the Gloriosum. All right, here we go. I feel like I kind of want to be a bit lazy about this, so I'm not even going to take the whole plant out. I'm just going to chop and then yank. It's going to be hard to do this and show you at the same time, but I'm chopping. Do you see here that green fat stem? That's the new growth that came out of that auxiliary bud. So we're going to chop it at the base and then pull it out. I don't recommend this, to be honest, because obviously you're gonna have root breakage. So if you wanna do everything to preserve those roots, then you shouldn't be doing it this way, but I'm literally, oh, can you see? Literally just like shimmying the plant out. And here's the cutting. Not bad. I don't even know what Gloriosums go for these days, but I feel like it'd be like, 20 bucks, 15 bucks, something cheap. It's been a really long time since like I've sold plants out of necessity to like generate some income. This one might be more difficult because it's probably more tangled up with the main root system. Oh, we're doing it, we're doing it. We did it. Here's the second one. These cuttings went on to caterpill growth quite quickly. And this one just has the one leaf. And then the last one will be this guy. Oh no. I really thought it had roots, but it had no roots. So this one's gonna go into water just like this. This won't be sold. So now basically what's left on the plant are all old leaves from like the, or the original bottom cutting. So I have an activated growth point like back here and I have one right here where the green is. I have one right here as well. I don't know if you'll be able to see there's a bit of green. So really this part of the this part of the plant I'm pretty sure has no more auxiliary buds left to grow. So I might as well like remove this and get rid of it. I'm pretty sure. I can take it out and we can just double check. Oh wait, but this one as well. Yeah, so all the way back here. And if there's no um, there's no more viable nodes left, then we're gonna just chuck this plant. I'm just freaking yanking her like a carrot. Cause I am 99% sure. Yeah, I'm 99% sure there's no more viable nodes. Ugh. Well, that's amazing. There's pawn all over me. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't the best idea I've ever had in my whole life. I don't endorse what I just did. Okay, so now the plant is this big. It just comes up to here now. In truth, it probably needs to be taken out because there's a lot of like severed roots here that are gonna rot, but I'm not gonna do that on camera. <laughs> Look at all this pond. <clears throat> I was looking forward to be able to um, vacuum the house without Huxley freaking out and chasing me but um he came home earlier than expected but he's also like freaking exhausted he always comes home from grandpa's house like absolutely shattered <laughs> he takes him for these really long walks and he runs around in his yard when he's doing yard work and it's been a really nice sunny week so i'm pretty sure they went on a lot of adventures well we got three cuttings out of that this one here this one here, and then this one, which will not be sold because I thought it had a root system, but it is not. Quick ad break, and we're gonna start on the cart. <sighs> I'm back. I ended up actually just doing all the repotting downstairs. 
before coming up to do the cards just because like either I was going to like wrap all the roots up in wet paper towels so they don't dry out and then like come back here and do this or I just finish it and then do this so I just decided to get it done and do you guys ever like repotting is not physically strenuous unless you're doing like gigantic plants but do you get like super, super thirsty after repot? Like I always have to chug water. So we're gonna work on getting this cart full of stuff, um, getting rid of all the things I don't need and filling it up with useful supplies. So this is a project I've been meaning to do for a year, two years. I don't know how long. I've had this in my plant room since I had a plant room and I always kept supplies on it or it's more like a storage for things I don't need right now, but I'd like to use it for things I actually need and I actually reach for on a daily basis or like a weekly basis. Um, right now, a lot of the stuff I use is down here, but not all. They're kind of like bits and bobs spread out around this room. So it'd be like useful to have them consolidated here. And then it has this little lid. Oh. This little lid. This cart is from Ikea, by the way. This is like a cart that they've done like every year. They do it in different colors. I don't know if this green color is currently available. I feel like it's kind of like a permanent color, but I could be wrong. But they often put out like really cute colors. I think last time I saw, was it orange? It might've been orange, like a burnt orange, or I could be wrong. I also have this in like a dark blue in my basement. And <laughs> this gold is just a very, poorly done spray paint job I did like years ago like before I ever lived in this house and it looks really bad but from afar you don't really notice so yeah it's full of stuff that are mostly plant related but it's not useful to me it's like parts of things that I don't need um, but it's like kind of useful to have and you're gonna see in a moment we're gonna take everything off I have a little bin here which I'm gonna put stuff that needs to get out of this room. And then we're gonna find a place for the things that like kind of are relevant to this room, but I don't really need. So yeah, I'm gonna link um, Charmaine's plant cart video. It's like, I think a plant tour video, but she does the plant cart in that video. Basically that video was the push I needed because I know I need to utilize this cart better. Just seeing the pure joy she gets out of that cart, I'm like, yeah, I want some of that joy. So, what is this? This came off of grow lights. Oh, geez. Okay, so the grow lights, they always come with these, like, they always come with these metal cables for hanging. And I never use them, but I keep them because I feel like I could use these cables for something else. To hang off my ceiling but i never ever ever use them so i think i'm gonna get rid of these i also have cables from my mother lights that i haven't hung them on the ceiling like they're still standing on the stand so i think that i can get rid of these so if i ever need cables i have like one set of backup cables hardware for that what are you dang it oh no these look like these look like feet for a shelf which all my shelves have feet but I will need this at some point I think I'm gonna keep that oh these are um, for wire shelves the little attachments to like hold the wire shelves in place so I'll keep that for sure and then this is a cable I think these are for monio slice so i'm definitely going to keep that this is like a what's it called oh i don't remember the name now I, i'll pop the name below but basically you stick this in water and it's like a little portable humidifier and you charge it by usb um i don't need this so i think i think i'm gonna sell it in the purge power strip this will go with the things that are useful but I don't need it right now not in my utility cart and then I have all these like um, candle things candle containers jars that um, I just kept in here because I have been meaning to get rid of the wax and use these for plants like this one I I don't think 
I don't think I want to use this for a plant because I don't really like this, but I can also paint it. So um, it's kind of like a, maybe it would fit a four, not a four inch pot, maybe a three inch pot, three and a half inch pot, one of those like Euro, Euro orchid pots. So um, I'm going to put these in the bin. And what I do is basically, I mean, I'm sure you guys know, like you just stick it in the freezer and the wax gets really hard. It comes out in one chunk. This one I think would be cute. This one, like it's like a smoky, um, greenish, I don't know if the light will pick it up, but it's kind of greenish and I'll just get that label off. I think that would be actually really cute as a plant pot. Um, I have wheels for my shelf that's in the grow tent. It does not need to be in here, so I'll take it out. Ah, these are S hooks. These are the big, I wish I could have bought them in like a smaller pack, but these are the big S hooks that I used. I used them in my EXO to like hang up the grids. This is too many. Um, I'll also find a place for it out like in like my utility section. I guess I'll create a utility section. A This is a bubbler. I haven't used it in a long time. Yeah, an aquarium air bubbler with an air stone. Um, I won't get rid of it, but I'll probably just put it like with all my aquarium stuff because I, I don't know, I don't use this. I don't reach for it. I've just been like water, watering, water rooting in just like still water. So actually I'll put this in the bin. More wire shelving attachments. A very random rope. Bamboo stick. This will go with my other bamboo sticks downstairs. More wire shelf stuff. I'm going to chuck them all in here. It feels like I have way more of these wire shelf folders than I have shelves. How did that happen? A broken hygrometer which is going in the garbage this one I could probably sell for like very cheap but these are grow lights that I used to use these are by Domia they're kind of more like a peachy peachy orangey warm light so this will go in the purge this came with this is like a weird pulley kind of situation um, this came with another grow light which I'm also going to sell in the purge or I don't know, if nobody takes it, I'm just gonna give it away. These, don't know what these are for. These are like little holders. These, like there's a 3M sticker on the back. What the heck is that for? I'll put it in with these wire shell things. Now, I don't know why, but I have one more plug for the Domia lights, but I only have one panel. So that's cool. A random lid. His friend, his bottom half, I, it's not even in here. Don't know why that's here. So this will go in the bin. I'll go find his, his partner. Micro USB chargers for what? I don't know. Okay, so these, these come off of my toilet. They just threw them in here, I realized, because, um, so basically at the base of the toilet, there's like a screw and this is just like a cap for the screw. At one point, Huxley kept somehow taking these off and bringing them to me in this room. So I took them off and put them here where he couldn't reach, but this <laughs> won't go back on the toilet. A bit of um, weather sealant, these like, kind of silicone gasket that I bought for my Millsbo cabinet, but this didn't actually work for me. This kept coming off. So I might actually just throw this away. I have this little container full of like hooks, little suction cup hooks. I think I'll keep this in here because I reach for these hooks every now and then. We're just gonna spray it down. Ooh, I found another suction cup hook. Give her a good wipe down.
All right, so she is ready to be loaded up. So yesterday, Charmaine and I went on a little adventure. She needed to film for her vlog channel. So we went on like a shopping adventure in like the Mount Pleasant area of Vancouver because we wanted to not necessarily thrift, but there were some like vintage stores we want to hit up. And there were a couple of thrift stores that we went to as well because we needed like clothing. We needed t-shirts. I didn't end up buying any t-shirts, but I did buy this sweater, US Department of Agriculture. I was so happy when I found this. I also bought a different sweater, but um, this was unplanned, but we spontaneously thought of it in the middle of the day. We went to a store called the Soap Dispensary. So it's one of those like zero waste stores where you buy everything in bulk, you bring your own jars, you fill things up. And they also sell really cute like bottles and containers. So we both picked up a bunch of stuff that will house like our our liquids, like our chemicals and stuff. Because basically neither of us want to see the original bottles of the stuff we have anymore. When it comes to like dilutions and stuff, all of that is available online if we need to. So that's really like the only reason I want to keep the original bottle. Um, unless um, the thing needs to be completely away from sunlight, which would be true of like, I think, Oh yeah, hydrogen peroxide. Myco is best to be stored in the dark. These things are for like the things that don't matter, like fertilizer. So we picked up, this one's not filled with anything yet, but the, the bottles look like this. And they have a bunch of different sizes and like you can get different caps with them. So you have like that regular cap, you can get um, like a spray bottle top or like a kind of olive oil kind of spout. And also, uh, oh yeah, soap dispenser top with but with the same bottle at the bottom so like these are so pretty i bought this size with the intention of putting like extra fertilizer in but i don't have enough fertilizer to fill it with right now so once we restock on tps1 that's going to go in here i have two of these that have nothing inside yet i got a couple of smaller ones it's so cute it's so freaking cute this one i filled with uh captain jack's dead bug brew I don't have any opinion on this yet. I have not used it, um, but I do plan on using it as a systemic for, or like a foliar spray systemic for my spider mites after I release those mites. Um, I've read that Captain Jack's is supposed to not kill beneficial mites, but we'll see. I'll give the mites a chance before I use this. This is TPS liquid soil. I also haven't used this, so the, my intention to put this in the bottle is to make sure that I actually put it into rotation, um, especially for my soil plants. So liquid soil is supposed to be like full of like beneficial bacteria just to bring more life back to your soil. Um, yeah, so that's there. This is a little jar of a mixture of sulfur and cinnamon. And I use, I use this to dip the cuttings in I just made. That's good for like preventing um, rot stem rot on your cuttings. Look how cute that looks. Oh my gosh, that makes me so happy to look at. It looks so neat. And then not from the soap dispensary. I wanted to wait a bit and use this for a little while longer to make sure like it works well. So I got these soap dispensers from Muji. I think they're like $4 or something like that. So I've been using this with my fertilizer. So TPS1 and CalMag, they each have a bottle. It's been, oh my gosh, I love it so much. Like, it's nothing new putting fertilizer into a soap dispenser. I don't know why I never did it. I kind of feel like I thought it was gonna clog or like it wasn't so bad to just like use a pipette and measure it out. But actually it's been very enjoyable, very just makes me dread watering less. And the reason why I wanna wait to talk about this is because I wasn't sure if this was gonna clog with TPS1 because if you ever use TPS1, you'll know that like when it dries, it forms all these crystals. I'll show you on, so this is the jar that I had it in. You can see like when it dries, if like it just forms all these like crystals. And like, I thought it would crystallize on that pump, but I think that like opening is small enough that it's not so much oxygen going through. So I've not had any issues. Oh, so cute. Like I'll just like come up to the side here with my watering can and I'll just be able to dispense some fertilizers. It's so good. 
So I'm not gonna use this jar anymore. Later, I'm gonna just empty this jar back into here and I can use this jar for something else. I was thinking maybe I'll use this for like slow release or something. This is a jar I got a long time ago from the dollar store. And then I have this container that lived on this shelf. It's full of stuff that I could put in here. So I have Dynagro Foliage Pro, but I don't have a bottle small enough for this. I've like gone through most of it, but I'm not using it right now. Like I said, I was trying to stick with one fertilizer, TPS1, with CalMag to make sure like I have a good opinion on that fertilizer. I mean, I don't know if I'll like do a full review on that fertilizer, but I just wanted to know like that's the fertilizer that's doing the work. That's the one that's feeding my plants. Um, I have a container of Great White. This is a empty bottle of CalMag I can throw away. Oh, more liquid soil. I literally just spilled liquid soil all over my pants and my socks and this stuff is like brown like soy sauce. Let me show you my sock. Dang it! it smells like... It smells very earthy in here now. Okay, and then um, what else? I have... Bonide systemic granules can go in there. I have like I have like containers and stuff, but I don't know if it should be in here. Maybe, yeah. I'll just put it down here. These are cups that I reach for a lot for planting in. Another freaking dead hygrometer. Oh yes. Here. This is the box for it. This is sweet moisture. This is that like portable, portable, portable humidifier. What's it called? Half sweet. That's not what it's called. Half sweet humidifier. Why don't they have the name in here? Anyway, <laughs> I just, <laughs> sweet, sweet moisture. I think I have two of these. So I think this is the second one. Um, more suction cups, which these are a little bit stronger than the other ones. I'll figure it out. I'll, I won't put it on the cart. Another one of these little boxes. Don't think I have a place for it in there. Lids for those deli cups, which would be useful if I was using it as like a, a domed, like rooting chamber terrarium setup. But I've just been using these deli cups just as like a plant pot, but I suppose I can keep them on the bottom here. So now this is empty. One thing I have been reading for a lot is Safer's End All. So I'll put this, does this fit? No, it doesn't fit, it's too tall. Dang it. A very algae ridden squeeze bottle. <laughs> squeeze bottle. I don't know why I didn't expect water to come out when I squeezed it. I think I will keep this on the cart, um, but I will wash it out with my bottle cleaner. So I'm gonna put this in the bin to deal with. <laughs> this is like, um, this was a candle, I think. Then I've been using it as like, um, a thing for like supplies. So I have these plant tags in there, scissors. I guess my shears can go in here, pop the shears in. Um, zip ties, which I haven't been reaching for lately. The only thing I would use zip ties for now, since I don't like make the traditional moss poles anymore, I think the only thing I would use it for is like connecting wires to the shelf. So I'll keep this in here. Extra lazy pull straps. Um, I have a little eyeshadow brush, which is for pollination. So I think this can stay bottom here. Now I'm really sad that this thing is too short for spray bottles because it would have been really useful. Unless, unless, could I do this? Maybe, I think I could do that. I mean like that's what I would do with like cleaning chemicals, like at a cafe, so why not? Oh, this one I could actually put into a jar. So this is a fertilizer called Epiphyte's Delight, which I got from Charmaine. I have not used it yet, but I do plan on using it, but for like specific plants. I wanna try it on my, what's it called? What is it called? The fuzzy plant. The name just escaped me. This plant here, because um, Charmaine's mom had really good success getting it to like sprout and come alive using this. I will put it back on the cart, but I'm gonna pop it in my bin so I can go downstairs clean out a jar and get that in there. So now I've emptied out one of these that lives on the shelf, which I can actually fill up with like all that stuff, all that electronic stuff that um, 
and also like the utility stuff like this i can put that in there the power strip these are also from charmaine or charmaine's mom um they're like little i'll pull one out actually they're like this and there's like a like double-sided 3m strip on the back so this could be used for like like your Hoya cabinet or something to like maintain the vines. I actually feel like this could be used for my Dioscoria discolor because the vines go freaking crazy and like it might actually enjoy this. Although in saying that, this might be a little bit big for those itty bitty little vines, but it's worth a try. But it's not something I'd be like reaching for like always. So I'm not gonna put it on the cart. I'm just gonna stick it in this box. It made so much space. By the way, this, like this all these like semi transparent boxes are from muji they're called a filing box and i use this shorter one for crawlers and i use the taller ones for supplies so this is what the cart looks like <laughs> it looks it's like so much fun i just want to like get repotting right now i'll give you a little 360 is kind of a little noisy with the glass, not gonna lie, but that's okay. Let me just space them apart a little bit. It's a little bit better. Oh, so good. And now this is actually a cart that I'll use. I'm like literally so smitten with these, first of all, these, these Muji ones. I will say, um, not every soap dispenser, like, I mean, if you've used different soap dispensers, you'll know that like the pump is not, not all pumps are made equal. So the Muji one, I can tell you, works well. I've been using these soap dispensers for soap for like, I don't even know, more than a decade. They've been really great. So um, I highly recommend this one. Jing has tried different soap dispensers from like different like kind of dollar store type places that have a very similar looking pump, but she says it leaks, like it just kind of drips from the pump, like from this part. So not everything will work. The one I can tell you works is Muji. I just feel like a little apothecary person, apothecarian, apothe a pharmacist. So I actually am planning to go back to the soap dispensary because I want um, this, this size bottle with the spray uh, attachment. I need that for um, systemic. So I need a couple of them. I think I need one for Captain Jack's and maybe one for Azimax, although I am taking a little break from Azimax because of how much it's burned my leaves. But I think the problem that I had was like I used it at full strength. So I think if I diluted it more, it wouldn't burn my leaves so much. So I, I want two bottles, one for J Captain Jack's, one for Azimax, or one for Captain Jack's and one for like alcohol, an alcohol spray for mealy bugs. But there's still plenty of space. Like the bottom of the cart is like, pretty much empty. It just has this little cup for my little, little, my little supplies and um, some cups, but I could probably fill that bottom part up with like saucers and like my go-to pot that I use for plants. But yeah, she's finally done. And um, for those of you who have already made the cart after seeing Charmaine's video, let me know what you've put in there because I would love to know like how I can fill this up. And the top here, because it has a lid, I can't put anything tall like because obviously I have a lid on top of it. I'm gonna keep that lid on there. Um, before I found this lid, actually, my boyfriend was going to make me like um, a big, big like wooden table with like a little guard cut out or like attached to it so it would like slide right onto the top of here i actually bought the wood already i just need to like paint it and he needs to like cut the pieces to like bracket it in i don't know if that's making any sense but the point of that is like i could use it slot it on this will be like a rolling thing for when i film repots which would be actually super useful and that can be like interchanged with this lid so that's the plan. The bar cart will be ever evolving. Thank you, Lisa, for giving me a little kick in the butt because um, she left a comment on my last video and said like, if you don't film it, you're not gonna do it. And you're right because I haven't done this for God knows how long and I've been putting it off for, for like what feels like ages. So it's finally done. And now I'm just gonna show you um, the purge plants. All right, so like I said, 
these plants have been dealt with and potted up already starting with the florida beauty this is the like lower down mid cut so i planted it like basically down here with the roots that were rooted into the moss pole they're just right here i have the stem kind of like at the front here so i can kind of monitor for stem rot there's a good amount of irrigation on the stem but unfortunately this cutting is like on the lower variegation side like these these two don't have much but this one has quite a bit and it's a bit brown so this one is not going to be an expensive cutting but the top cutting i really did the most with this um, I wanted to ensure that it roots really fast and like just maintains that maturity as much as possible. So this is what it looks like now. Those three leaves. And then I actually put it on one of Lauren's um, poles, the, the semi-translucent one. So there was an active aerial root up here. So I wrapped the whole thing with saran wrap because I want like lots of fast root growth here and also in the substrate and and the substrate I chose was tree fern fiber so tree fern mixed with perlite and my pond mix in drainage because I don't know that everyone's like into the no drainage life so I think this looks actually really good so hopefully there's someone who's looking for a Florida beauty because <laughs> I do need these plants to sell the dark phoenix went into pond because if you didn't know dark phoenix freaking loves pond like it just lives for pond so this is the the leafless one with lots of nodes this is the two leafer that one and that one now i don't know how to price these and i also don't know which one to keep because i'm not going to sell both of them i do need to keep one for insurance because the, the the mother plant like the top cutting looks really good it looks really full like the the roots are really healthy but in the time that it was downstairs and it might just be in my mind but in the time it, it was downstairs it got a little soft like it wasn't droopy but the leaf texture didn't feel as thick anymore i'm wondering if it was in my head like do i remember the texture differently i freaked out a bit i inoculated it with great white and i shoved it straight back into my tent the last thing i need to do with these ones is to get a bit of great white in here but not a lot i basically want to keep the substrate slightly damp but not as wet as i would um not not that i keep it super wet but i don't want to feel like a big reservoir i want this to be quite airy because it is a cutting basically i want to reduce the chances of rot so i'm only going to add a tiny bit of great white to these which is kind of standard procedure for me um although this one probably should be fine with like the standard amount of water because i potted the stem like kind of above the substrate so there's like a lot of airflow in and around like the bottom cut cut the bottom cut um and then the last one is tag fell out that like bottom chunk like the original mother plant chunk which i mean i would absolutely be thrilled if another plant grew from this but i'm not sure if there are any viable nodes left in that and then i just wanted to quickly show you i did check downstairs and this looks like a spent node so well this looks like a series of spent nodes <laughs> so really quickly in case anyone is interested in knowing how to identify a spent node so i cut off three cuttings right and these are the nodes that those cuttings came off of so this node here where this leaf came from the axillary bud we've already cut off that uh, the second plant that grew from it and then this node here the axillary bud was right here with this like light area is that's where one of the cuttings came from and then this node here the leaf is already fallen off but the axillary bud was here like we chopped that off so this will not grow another plant and this is basically compost like there's this i mean it's kind of cute i guess like you could like keep this as decoration for a little bit but like this would not ever grow another plant so i just thought i'd show you that another plant i thought i'd sell this is um basically a unknown pappy hybrid from indonesia so this is the newest leaf that grew oh it's actually really cute minus a bit of damage so i've been meaning to sell this for a while but there was a bit of fungal issues with it which was happening lower down in the leaves so i wanted to make sure that didn't continue and also 
this was happening. Do you see these little, little speckles here? So I was always convinced this was spider mite damage, but this lives inside my exo, which to my knowledge, to my knowledge does not have spider mites. But I read a thread, um, I forget which Facebook group it was, but someone was asking about these little speckles that they find on their anthuriums and someone said they are flat mite damage. So back when I saw like this leaf with all the speckles, I treated this plant fully with uh, Seifert's Endol, like it's, it's a miticide. So the next leaf, this is still a very soft floppy leaf, doesn't have it. So I think we are in the clear. It's not spider mites to the best of my knowledge. Like I wouldn't sell a plant with spider mites on it. I want to chop off the leaf with the fungal damage cause I don't want it to, I don't know, spread if it's still active. So this leaf right here is coming off. And then, yeah, I'm actually gonna cut off all, most of the lower leaves, so this one. Um, I, this might be dust, but it might be fungal, but I'll tell you why I'm cutting it off in just a second. Um, this one here. So I'm cutting this off just to expose more stems so that I can just create a little collar here so it can root a little bit more, like a little pot extension, like the way I did my queen. Well, I'll pop a photo here of what I did to my queen. That queen, by the way, that I repotted, like immediately started growing a new leaf. Now it's pushing, the leaf is starting to emerge and it had not grown a leaf for at least six months. I, I wanna say like nine months it hadn't grown a leaf. So very happy with that. It's quite cute. It's like a very dark, elongated leaf. It's a little bit more round on top. Why am I selling it? I do enjoy this plant, but um, I don't need, I don't need this plant. I have another hybrid, like a Pappy hybrid from the seller that I like a little bit more. So this one can go to a, a new owner. So that one's gonna go. I'm also thinking, just so I can like get this out of my sight, my Manjula that I grew up a pole. Yeah, I chopped the top off because I didn't like how speckly it was. And it's like, it started growing again. So I might just sell this as like a chop and reprop kind of project. I mean, there's lots of nodes on here to like play with and get like a nice full pot. So I think I'm gonna sell that too. And then um, in terms of the next steps, my refresh, I'm not gonna do this on camera, but basically my tent, my tent is here. My makeup table is here. I'm gonna swap places. So this way, um, like I'll have like a basically L shape of plants. So this, this wall of plants, and then this wall will continue and there'll be a grow tent here. I've been wanting to do that for a while. I haven't had the energy for it, but now that I don't have a job or a full-time job, I will do that. And that means this desk will move here and then um, I might install some grow lights on that side so I can grow some plants like on the floor. I really wanted to do that this week, but because my boyfriend's been away, like I don't know how Charmaine just moves these giant pieces of furniture around the house, just drags it without any help. I'm, I'm not capable. I, I know I can't do that <laughs> by myself. Um, in terms of what I still need to do, oh my gosh, I just forgot that I had liquid soil over me and it's like, Ugh. It smells just so dirty. But yeah, in terms of next steps, that's the main thing I need to do. And then once that's done, then I'll move things around. And I'm sure when I like take all of my plants out of my grow tent, I'm gonna see like plants that I wanna move out, plants I wanna move back in. But yeah, those are the next steps. That will be maybe part three of the plant room refresh. Um, but yeah, that is everything for me today. I filmed for much longer <laughs> than I had anticipated this, this, um, this little bit is already an hour. So I better end this here. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give it a like and I will see you next week with another video. Mwah.